Hi everybody, welcome back to another technical demo of an event driven auto scaling on Kubernetes. This is the third use case of how to build your event driven cloud native application for auto scaling on Kubernetes through Knative and Kafka. Let's get started. So first of all, as always, if you didn't have a chance to watch the first and second use case video, I would say you're going to go to find the two videos on my YouTube channel and then just watch them because it will be very helpful to understand this third video because we're going to keep using the same application based on Quarkus to deploy the auto scaling capability on Kubernetes. So first question is, what about serverless auto scaling? Whenever you think about event driven application, so maybe you need to combine the serverless application capability with the event driven processing because all serverless application can be should be triggered by event messaging from external services or RESTful API, even end user uh, just clicking on the, some of the menu on the web browser. And the bigger question is, we already run through Kata how to make your auto scaling capability on Kubernetes better. And then my next question for developer or even SRA, what is the main differences between Kata and Knative? We already have application on serverless capability on Azure Cloud with the Kata capability and Azure function go for it. Uh, but in a lot of companies and a lot of developers also interested in vanilla Kubernetes and with the serverless application deployment. In that case, Knative was really hot topic in a project to, to deal with your serverless capability and deployments. Here's a few blue points for you to understand what kinds of differences you can have for Kata and Knative. So first of all, the Kata scale standard Kubernetes resources such as deployment, staple set, job, etc. But the Knative, you can deploy application as Knative services rather than standard deployments. Kata pulling metric from external services and then trigger the standard Kubernetes resources for auto scaling. On the other hand, Knative has own auto scaler, which is Knative auto scaler, and then it pushes Knative services for auto scaling. And then Knative also includes uh, Knative eventing capability which allows you to consume and process cloud events messaging. But the one big concern for the developer, you need to rewrite the application to handle Knative eventing messaging processing. In the Kata will be more focused on event driven or scaling. However, Knative will be more focused on event based auto scaling from triggering in a some kind of messaging from external services or even HTTP scaling HTTP request based on RESTful API. This is a third use case of how to redesign for auto scaling on Kubernetes with Knative. So we're going to first rewrite the existing application and consume Knative messaging as well as cloud events. And then we're going to deploy the application, not just standard deployment object, but it based on Knative services, and then we're going to uh, enable Knative event Kafka source to consume messaging from Kafka based on Knative services, and then we're going to use Knative auto scaler to scale your actual application from 0 to 1, just like a serverless behavior. All right, let's get into the demo, how it works. So this is my Quarks application. If you already watched it first, and second video, maybe you can already recognize all oh, application of just rewriting based on uh, in everything. And then we're going to use a singleton annotation and then put a simple Java method, just uh, consume the Kafka source and then just print out the event messaging. Pretty simple. And you go to application profile file and you can find operating shift configuration and then you need to specify container image group, which is exactly the same name of your project name, which is Kafka-K-Native. And then the one thing you might already recognize, there's no configuration about Kafka topic thing, which we put into that configuration, for example, the Kafka server name, like a bootstrap server, and then serialization method, but we do not that configuration in this time because we're going to use Enable eventing Kafka source 
which is already installed on my Kubernetes cluster, which is OpenShift cluster. Okay, so this is how to deploy and configuration. And I'm going to change my project using OC command line. This is a Kafka K native project. And you can see I already installed Kafka cluster using operator. And you go to K native serving. Uh, you can find the auto scaler on Knable, which I already installed OpenShift serverless operator, which enables me to have serverless capability based on Knative. And then there are uh, Knative eventing project. You can see the Kafka Knative eventing controller already installed inside the Knative eventing project. So this is uh, allows me to have Kafka sourcing capability rather than putting the all kind of configuration inside the application side. Okay, go back to Kafka dash K neighbor project. And then I'm going to deploy my application using Quarkus CLI from my local uh, Quarkus build. Uh, I'm going to skip unit tests at this moment. And then it takes some minute uh, to complete behind the scene. I'm going to packaging application for fast star first. And then I'm going to containerize this application using Docker file. And then uh, this containerized application will push it into integrate container registry, which is already existing in OpenShift cluster. You can also push it that image into external container registry, for example, Quay.io and Docker Hub or a Google Container Registry, uh, whatever you need. And then just Finish that build, and then when you go back to open the web console developer perspective, you can see the new KNM services just created, it, and then Quarkus application just started really fast. And then go to Quarkus runtime logs, you can find the Quarkus application running on JVM, and then the race version 2.8.1, which is exactly the same Quarkus version we deployed in the first and the second demo for HPA auto scaling, also KDA auto scaling. But two examples are not serverless application. Okay, so just uh, you, you're gonna change your label to show this application based on Quarkus, which is making me feel comfortable and to distinguish it, uh, the other application in the production environment. You can also label your application as serverless uh, using Boston dot and then slash function true, and then you can now see this is a function application. More explicitly showcase that. Okay, here's a Kafka source based on KNAV eventing. And then you can see the KNAV uh, resources and uh, enable Kafka source. And then here's a uh, bootstrap server name, which is exactly the service name I already deployed in my uh, Kafka KNAV project. And then the topic name, my topic. And here's a super important thing you need to make sure. Uh, sync reference services, which is the same name or your application deployment, like a quarks dash EDA dash KNAB dash demo, which is the same name. Because Kafka messaging will be uh, assumed uh, by this application. In the meantime, Quarkus application will be terminating automatically because the default computation on a native for scale down to zero is 30 seconds. So what I am keep talking about this demo, it already uh, passed 30 seconds, which means this app is scaled down to zero automatically. Let's try to create the Kafka source, and you can see the Kafka source automatically attach your serverless application. Now, if you give us a moment, it automatically scaled down to zero perfectly. And I'm going to create the uh, Kafka performance project job, which I'm going to use existing Kafka project per performance to test the bash script you can see inside the Kafka cluster by default. And then it will create a dummy messaging, like a million messaging every single second. And then it will create the five different dot pod, which means the five million messaging will be created and push it into a Kafka topic will be consume our Quarks application running on KNABLE services. Okay, paste the info YAML file, and then create the dev thing, and then go back to top of the view. You can see the, the five job just uh, running, and then when you go to that application, you can find uh, the dummy record just created and sent to Kafka topic. 
And in the meantime, as you can see, the Quarkus subrest application just scale up, uh, just like a subrest behavior. Here is some potential problem. When you go to uh, Tom's uh, URL, you can find the Kafka source is actually running on the pod. And then you can see only one Kafka source running on to process all Kafka messaging from Tapi. Even though there are 5 million messages just created and sync into this Kafka source, but it's still one, even though there are mess of the uh, metrics there. And then your Quarkus application keep consuming, processing the millions of event from Kafka topic. There's no auto scanning in the end. So this is just some kind of limitation when you use a neighbor eventually even auto scaling. In the meantime, our Kafka performance process job is already done, but the our Quarkus application keep consuming and processing the messaging. It's super crazy busy just like this one. All right, if you give it some moment, it will scale down to zero just like that. I'm gonna make it uh, fast this video. I just cut maybe 10 minutes, uh, just get rid of that. I'm just saving my time and then your time as well. Here's the thing, the KNAV allows your Quarkus application scale up based on event messaging from Kafka source automatically, which is really awesome. But uh, as you can see, there are millions of messaging generating and syncing into Kafka source and syncing over this application through Kafka source. But there's no auto scaling based on that millions of metrics, event messaging for Kafka source itself, but also actual application like a Quarkus application. But once the application consume and the process of all messaging, in the end, the application scale down to zero, just like a serverless behavior, which is really good still. So this is a third video, how to build auto scaling capability on Kubernetes with the KNAV and Kafka for your event driven application. I'm going to be spoil the last use case and video, which we're going to redesign and for optimize for auto scaling for event driven application with Kata and KNAV for Kafka messaging. Stay tuned. Hope you see for the next video. Thanks for watching.